What's going on guys, it's Bromley. Today we're gonna deviate from our normal conversation. Usually we talk about more general training stuff, programming instruction, training philosophy, exercise, tips and tricks and so on. Now I'm doing daily videos, so I have a little more leeway, I feel like, to talk about whatever pops into my mind, especially if it is a little meta, if we're gonna talk about something more foundational that can still really provide a lot of insight and help with regards to how we do succeed in the gym. So I'm gonna take my liberties here. If this isn't your cup of tea, I understand. There will still be plenty of typical training videos down the road, but I'm gonna get a little philosophical here. So if I can somehow avoid being the old guy that's talking about how society's going to hell in a handbasket, I do wanna talk about kind of the general zeitgeist as far as our culture and how we see success. And I wanna talk a little bit about the mindset of the successful person because these things are ingrained in who you are and they tell the world how you solve problems, how you face obstacles, how you see yourself as an agent for change in your own life. And those are all of the things that are really important about your identity. When it comes to success in general, in your career and relationships, that is going to be paramount. Obviously, it's going to have something to say about how successful you are when it comes to gym goals, when it comes to leveling up, increasing your total, adding mass, leaning out. These are all things that are not easy. They all go against the grain as far as what our bodies are comfortable doing in their given environment. They all require us to be extremely uncomfortable for periods of time, to delay gratification, to not listen to impulses, and to specifically incur a lot of pain and discomfort for the thought that we might get something worthwhile down the road. All of that is completely analogous to what you have to do in life, in society, in work. Uh, when it comes to leveling up and becoming successful. I still haven't really internalized the concept of success into my personal identity. I still very much see myself as somebody who is still chipping away, is still not quite there yet. I have plenty of things I want to do in my life, though I am very grateful for where I am. I mean, the fact is I am equidistant from my bed and my Nintendo Switch. And this is where I work and this is where I make most of my income. Given the fact that most days I do work in my pajamas, I still managed to marry a brown goddess who I'm convinced is descended from the Amazon. Bagging her was really my last chance at having kids that are strong and beautiful. So when I compare myself to where I am now versus where I was as a lost 20 something, I absolutely see success and the habits that lead to success is paving that way. Conversely, there is a quality that I think generally successful people have where they never see their efforts as being enough. There's always a sense that we could have done more or that we should be doing more. And having that voice in my head during my late teens, early 20s, there was a good 10 year chunk of time where I dicked around a lot. Long story short, we had some issues with mental illness and addiction. My father fell out of my life when I was about 15. So a lot of those crucial formative years, I didn't have any instruction or re really was the accountability. I didn't have that same stability that you need when things tend to be most in flux in your life. And in our teens and early 20s, I mean, human beings are a shit show in those years. That's where you need the parent figure to yell at you. That's where you need structure. That's where all of our impulsive decisions and being left to our own devices usually leads to a worse outcome. For those 10 years, I was in and out of college the entire time. I didn't even turn out a degree. I went from odd job to odd job. I drank way too much. There are a lot of regrets I have as to how I handled that. I'm just really grateful that that didn't consume me like it can consume so many other people. And one of the reasons that I do think I made it out of that hole in my life is that I always had a voice in the back of my head that whispered ever so softly as I was at my worst, you're fucking up. If it wasn't for that voice, if it wasn't for the constant self-criticism, and I can almost frame it as an echo of the lessons I got early on from my father, who was a very smart man and a very good teacher for the years that I had him. But the fact that those lessons did ingrain themselves in my head at an early age, I think gave me a huge margin for error. I think it gave me a big cushion and a very solid way for combating those dysfunctional habits I fell into later in life. And ultimately listening to that voice is what led me out of that period of my life. And it's responsible for the track that I'm on today. So even with where I'm at today, it's very easy to look around with what I have and what I've gotten for myself. It's very easy, very tempting to pat myself on the back and say that I've done enough. It's very tempting to look at my bank account, the fact that I'm not in debt anymore. It's very easy to look at my relationship. It's very easy to look at the work that I have for myself, the fact that I do stay productive and that I do have goals to chip away at. It's very tempting to pat myself on the back, but I also know that the second I get complacent, the second the concept of this being good enough settles into my psyche, I'm going to take my foot off the gas. So for those of you that have your houses in order, 
you know, this might seem like very simple stuff that you already know. You might find it cringy and kind of hacky. To those of you that haven't stumbled across this, a lot of times this wisdom, as simple and straightforward as it is, can be like a drink of water to somebody dying of thirst in the desert. It's worth talking about and it's worth repeating because it's it represents things that we forget or things that we stop paying attention to. We end up going through so much of our life on autopilot that it's important that we reestablish our virtues and our principles and what we think is important about ourselves with regards to our ability to solve problems and to face obstacles. So as far as mindset, the things I like to repeat to myself, the things that I think are largely responsible for the good works that I have done and for what I plan on doing down the road, there are a couple of things to pay attention to. I think one that we kind of covered, it's the mindset that we've never done enough. Now, how aggressive you get with that perspective, that changes from person to person. I think there's many people that hear that and it puts a bad taste in their mouth because they think that leads to a complex or some type of unhealthy level of self-criticism. I'm not suggesting to you that you should go whip yourself with a cat of nine tails as penance for your lazy life choices. I'm suggesting that you should take responsibility for the fact that you have a lot more power and influence in your life than you may give yourself credit for. The heart of empowerment is understanding that you do in fact have agency in your life and you can incite change. Now, I think a big reason that people shoot themselves in the foot and I think a big reason that the whole motivational success niche is needed is because people are actually averse to empowerment. This is something that people don't wanna talk about. Anybody who works as a consultant, anybody who works specifically with clients regarding any type of success or self-improvement, my field included, anybody who works in the field of behavioral health will cite abundant instances where people self-sabotage and they shoot themselves in the foot, which begs an interesting question. Why would somebody intentionally opt to not succeed? Well, the thing about empowerment, the thing about accepting that you do have agency in your life is that it comes with responsibility. What did we learn from Stanley and Spider-Man? With great power comes great responsibility. If you are in fact the one that has a predominant amount of influence in your life, given the choices you make and the place that you put yourself and how you attack obstacles and how you react and respond to other people, then you ultimately limit your ability to blame external factors for your situation. That is something that is very, very scary to people. It's something that not a lot of people like to talk about, but if you've been around the block and if you've been in the fields that I talked about, this is something you see so clearly that once you recognize it, you can't unsee it. People will do a lot of damage to their own life to maintain their role as somebody who is not responsible for the bad things that happen to them. Think about that for a second. Faced with an option between being responsible and having the ability to make positive change in your life or deferring responsibility and keeping your lot in life lower so that you ultimately are not responsible for the outcome, so you are not to blame, many people will choose the latter. So if you're going to take inventory of yourself, the wins and losses you've had in your life, the things you've done well that you're proud of, or the losses that keep you up at night, you have to take inventory with which type of person you are. Now, turning that mindset around takes forever. It is not easy, I'm gonna tell you that right now. But the biggest, most substantial change you can make is being upfront with yourself that that is a possibility. It is possible that you have deferred responsibility in places where you might have taken responsibility and gotten a better outcome. Just like with addiction treatment, the first and most vital step is accepting that there's a problem in the first place. Nothing can happen until you do that. So just being aware of it, just, just seeing it, recognizing it in yourself, it's one of the most profound changes you can make. Empowerment is not an easy thing. Many people want to have it always. Many people want all of the freedom and liberty, all of the power and influence, all of the authority, all of the self-sovereignty without having any of the actual accountability when things go sideways. People do it all the time with their political opinions. Think of how many people take very strong, impassioned, even radical positions on some political topic. Think for a second what would happen if that person was given the button. Think what would happen if all of a sudden you're the one with skin in the game and you are ultimately responsible for the outcome, for the consequences that might affect millions of people if you implement the policy exactly the way that you expressed it over Twitter. What you're talking about now is a very different ball game and the difference is accountability. If you are the one with the power and influence, you are the one who is responsible. And the thought of taking responsibility, of having that target on your back, is absolutely terrifying. But there are no two ways about it. If you have empowerment, if you have agency, if you are the one in the driver's seat, you are the one responsible for the outcome. Don't run from it. 
Don't be afraid of it. Don't defer it to somebody else. Take it, own it, and use it as something that is an incentive to push you forward. There is no scenario in your life where you get to defer blame to somebody else when things go wrong, where you are also the one who is empowered. Those two things do not go together. You have to understand that right now. So that's just a little bit of insight into mindset and how it leads to people making better habits that are more likely to produce success over time. Let me know what you think. Let me know how you relate to these ideas, if you liked them or if you didn't like them, if you wanna see more of this type of content or if you want me to just leave it to programming instruction. Thanks guys for watching. Until next time, coming from my bedroom, this is Bromley. I'll see ya.